It does kind of feel like I was invited to the wrong conference because I'm not really a data guy. Uh, I, for the last four years or so, uh, I've been working uh, on, um, on stuff that I love, okay, and I'm going to be talking about this uh, more during the talk here. I want you to remember this, though. This is, this is really important. You don't want to put out mediocre work, and, and, and you don't want to feel mediocre about what you're doing. Uh, surprisingly, we don't always do this, though, so I'll come back to it. Right now, I work at Google, and for the last four years at Google, I've been there for six and a half total, I've been working on compiler technology because I have this passion around developer tools, and I've been working on uh, static program analysis. So when you take uh, Google's source code and you treat it as data, you take all the world's open source code and you treat it as data, it's actually not a very big data set, right? It's, I don't know, a couple dozen terabytes, a couple hundred terabytes, but it's pretty tiny compared to the, the big data sets at Google. So, you know, and I've had scaling problems, but, you know, I'm not really a data guy per se. But, gosh, I work with people who do have data problems. And, I, you know, I have to say, just in passing, Google is an awesome place to work. I went to work for Google, actually, specifically, because I think that Google is trying to change the world. Okay? I mean, and they're serious about it. And I, you know, I kind of thought this when I went there six and a half years ago, and after six and a half years, you know, what with Google being the only ones trying to defend net neutrality, right, when nobody else was, Google trying to open up China, I mean, that was pretty audacious, right? You know, they haven't always been successful in their goals, but man, they have, they're really trying to change the world, okay? And they have big scaling problems, okay? Sometimes, you know, it feels like it's their biggest problem. But it's funny because, you know, scaling, and we're all going to be really focused on these details, right, you know, and during this conference, this, the technical details of making things scale. But it's sort of this periodic problem, right? You know, you need to scale because you've got a problem to solve, and then it's good enough for a while, and you can focus on problem domains, and then it becomes a problem again as you grow. Just like software engineering scaling has been a problem kind of on and off. We're actually pretty good at it right now. Okay, you know, whereas 10, 15 years ago, we were building software systems that we didn't understand. So we knew we needed to step back and get some new abstractions. Anyway, before I was at, or sorry, yeah, before I was at Google, I was at Amazon.com for six and a half years. Another company that's trying to change the world. Okay, Jeff Bezos has grand visions. And it's another company with huge scaling problems. Now, they are awesome also. It's kind of a different flavor of awesome than Google. Uh, they, they're pretty open about their, you know, their work environment being very frugal, right, because their vision is to pass savings on to customers. But I wasn't there for the work environment. I wouldn't have stayed there six and a half years. They have great people there, right, and they have tremendous scaling problems, okay? Scaling really is often too there is the biggest problem. Why? Because they're fundamentally relational and transactional. Now, I know what you're thinking, <laughs> right? You know, nobody here likes relational anymore, but they have to make it scale, okay? I got one person to laugh. And, uh, <laughs> but seriously, like, you know, and, they, and they, they succeed at it, right? And Google also has some transactional data. Google uses MySQL for their ads system. And it's really, really hard to scale, but you can make it happen. And again, Amazon is a company that's not mercenary, okay? They're trying to make money, and that's good, because money, you know, is the fuel for innovation, okay? But they're doing it with principle, all right? And the retail thing that Amazon did was sort of like a means to an end, just like scaling is a means to an end, right? But they've, now they're doing cloud computing, and, you know, I mean, Bezos has got big plans, right? Just like Larry and Sergey. So what about, you know, what about the rest of us, right? What are we doing, you know, right now? What are we focused on? Well, I want to look at one of our sister industries here that you're all real familiar with, Hollywood, okay? It's not exactly been a banner year for them, has it? You might have noticed all the movies suck this year. Okay, 28 sequels and comic book movies, and why is this, right? Well, I mean, we know the reasons. You know, it's, it's human nature. You know, it's corporate greed, okay, you know, companies being mercenary, taking advantage of consumer apathy, right? If we keep paying to go see movies like Scream 4 and Hangover 2 and Transformers 17 and whatever, then they'll keep making them, right? And the same thing's going on in the game industry, right? Game industry, hundreds and hundreds of titles coming out. I assume that some of you are like me and you like video games, or you have kids who like video games, or you have friends who like video games, and they're always complaining that there aren't any good games. But there's so many good games, right? There are talented people working on them, great animators, you know, and, and great cinematographers and sound people, and, right? But, but most of the games are pretty bad. And again, it's because people keep paying for them, so people keep making them. Yeah, except for these guys, okay? Right? Hollywood calls them auteurs, right? But what they really are is they're people who are making money but with principles, okay? Whether the principles are 
you know, stretching you a little bit and making you think about, you know, philosophy and the nature of consciousness while you're getting entertained, or they're bringing up social issues like trashing the world and Wally, or they're putting some serious history into their game experience like Rockstar, you know, I mean, you know, whatever, you know, whatever it is that they're passionate about, okay, it really bleeds through, it shows through in their final product. And they're making everyone else look bad. And they're also showing that you can still make a ton of money with principle. Okay? And Jeff Bezos and Steve Jobs, you know, they fall into this, into this category. I mean, you know, anybody can have principle. Bill Gates does today, right? He's sort of atoning for his past, his past sins, right? Did he have principle when he was at the helm at Microsoft? No, obviously. And now he knows, well, you know, he probably didn't need to be that way. Okay. Hey, they promised me I could see my slides on this thing, but I can't, so I have no idea what's coming next. Oh, yeah. This is what we're working on right now. Is this principled? I mean, seriously, who in here is not working on something that's kind of related to a social network? Okay? Ooh, wow, well, like five hands out of a thousand people in this room. Seriously. Okay? Well, this is fun, and this is also, you know, obviously making money. You can make a buck with cat pictures, all right? You know? Social networks, I mean, you know, they have a purpose, right? You know, and Facebook's, you know, purpose, I mean, their purpose is whatever they make easiest, and so that's what people are going to do with it, right? You know, and, and Facebook, and <laughs> Facebook clones, if anybody's making any of those, uh, <laughs> is that, you know, they're, they're, they're really good at sharing cat pictures. Now, they can have secondary benefits to humanity, like, for example, you know, helping out with the information flow into and out of the Middle East, but that's not what they were designed for, and so that's not what people are using for, and it winds up being crap, just like Hollywood's movies. So, here's what happens over time. As you get older, and it happened to me, I don't know how it happened, right, but I'm, I'm getting older, you start getting interested in these sort of broader problems, okay, than cat pictures. I'm not saying that you don't, you're not interested in social anymore, okay, obviously, you want to hang out with old people, but, you know, but you also get interested in, like, why they haven't cured heart disease yet, right? And uh, trust me, my heart's pounding up here, so I'm kind of wondering, like, right now, you know, and, you, and as, you, as you gain wealth, okay, if you're not a total mercenary, then you start getting interested in charity, right, you know, and, and helping people who are needy, and you start getting interested in politics and all these other kind of hard problems, right? And a lot of them, interestingly, are data mining problems. Ooh, tie into our conference. Well, the problem is by the time you're old, <laughs> it's too late. Right? What you want is a time machine so you can go back and tell yourself, hey man, if you'd like studied some math, then you could probably work on some of the, the hard problems like signal processing, right? Voice recognition is, a, is, a, is an important problem because it, you know, it's an accessibility thing, right? It's putting you know, blind people and deaf people in the same position we are. Natural language processing, same thing, you know, genes, viruses, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of problems out there that have the common characteristic that they're not just computing problems, so they're a little harder because you've got to know a little bit of math, a little bit of statistics, right? You don't have to be world, you don't have to be Halvarian. You just have to be fluent, you have to be literate, right? Well, here's an interesting problem that we could be working on if we were literate, right? Have you guys thought about this project at all? Human Genome Project, what is it? The genome sequence that they've got now, okay, is the compiled binary to the source code for the human body, for life, the mechanics of life. If we had the source code in our hands, that would be the cure for cancer right there. That would be the cure for all the viruses, all of them. That would keep antibiotics ahead of bacteria. It, innumerable benefits. We know this. You could also hack things, like grow your own tattoo, right? But it's meaningful. It, would be an, it will be an inflection point in human history, okay? And it's a data mining problem. Okay? Now, I know a lot of you are already good at data mining. I mean, there was like a dude sitting next to me at dinner last night named Jay who was a freaking superhero. He was a thousand times smarter than I am. And I brought up this project and he says, ah, yeah, I'm not really a bioinformatics guy, but, uh, but you know, and he scribbles on the back of a napkin how you could set up this, you get a benevolent billionaire to like, you know, set up a, a, a treatment system in a third world country and start gathering data points so that you can analyze the effectiveness of the treatments. Because what we're trying to do with the compiled binary is reverse engineer the source code by data mining it against treatments, right? And if you get that data set, then we're there, right? He's like, yeah, but I'm not really a bioinformatics guy. What's he working on? Cat pictures. <laughs> okay? Now, and he was, a, he was like a closet superhero, right? The dude sitting next to him was wearing a cape. I'm not making this up, all right? He wasn't even trying to hide his superhero status, right? You guys are superheroes, okay? And we're all working on, you know, well, crap. 
okay, most of us anyway. Now, if we started focusing on these problems, I know it sounds kind of crazy, okay, but we would actually have a chance of solving them, you know? And if we just focus on scaling, then we're gonna scale up Farmville, okay? It's gonna be Farm Planet, you know? And I'm not saying Farmville doesn't have value, you know, I, I guess, but um, <laughs> yeah, okay. So what's needed here is pretty obvious. It's a culture change, okay? We all need to be auteurs, right? We need to start buckling down now and preparing for getting old and getting interested in medicine and so on. Start, start studying our math, right? Start paying attention to data science. It's not a specialty discipline anymore. It's a generalist discipline, right? It should be, okay? Even at Google, where there's a lot of people who know a lot about data mining, it's still kind of a, you know, the haves and the have-nots like me, right, you know, who don't know it, you know? Well, O'Reilly, amazingly enough, seems to be actually trying to change the world with this convention and with Strata, right? I mean, they're actually saying, hey, gosh, look, data, data mining, machine learning, data analysis, math, right? Well, okay, if we want a culture change, I've got a challenge. I've got a challenge for O'Reilly and a challenge for us, okay? The challenge for O'Reilly is to publish a bunch of books on math for programmers. Right, because O'Reilly's got a formula, right, for making information accessible. And, well, let's go on a limb. Let's do physics, let's do bioinformatics. Why not, right? Let's give them two years to publish these things. And then in that two year period, after they've published them all, right, we will agree to buy them and read them and, and prepare ourselves to solve important problems five years from now. Two years. Whoa, I meant two seconds, okay? They published them already. Did you guys know this? Okay, and, yeah, well you did. Okay. okay, so like, look at this, okay? Bioinformatics, Perl computer skills, mastering Perl for bioinformatics. An O'Reilly bioinformatics book, okay? A lot of these came out just in the last two or three years. Okay, I didn't even know they existed, but something's going on here, okay? I'm kind of reading between the lines, I'm kind of making some educated guesses, but I know that these books aren't selling. Okay, so why are they publishing them? It's because Tim and his team are trying to change the world by affecting a culture change. So the ball is totally in our court, right? And what's the ball doing? Well, the ball's apparently doing iPad. This is what's popular right now on O'Reilly's site. I just took this screenshot yesterday, okay? Head, for, well, head first, that's kind of mathy. The rest of it, PHP, come on, PHP. <laughs> PHP. I had to get a PHP joke in, and I got one, captive audience. All right, so, but seriously, like, obviously O'Reilly is, is principled here, okay? Because if they were just trying to make a buck, they'd be throwing OSCON iPad, wouldn't they? Okay? They would, okay? And they probably talked about it at length. But, <laughs> but no, no, they're doing OSCON data, okay? So, you know, why don't we just affect a culture change here, right? Yeah, I'm not saying drop what we're doing right now. I mean, the world needs cat pictures, yeah, right? But what if we st all started studying data mining and, 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 and so on? And if you already know that stuff really well, then shame on you because you're only one step away from solving hard problems, important problems, okay, world-changing problems. You've just got to learn the domain knowledge, right? You don't need to learn it overnight. I do compiler stuff static program analysis at Google. I didn't know any of it four years ago. Nothing, right? I had a compiler class in school. And now, you know, I, I'm not like, you know, Walter Bright or James Gosling, but I know compilers pretty well. I'm pretty proficient with them and I can solve the problems that I need to solve. Same thing goes for this, right? So, here's the funny thing, is I had a midlife crisis instantly after writing and rehearsing this speech once. I rehearsed it and I went, oh God, I'm not following my own advice. So I dragged my math books down from upstairs and put them on the table here, and my wife and I are having study hour every day from now on. Moreover, this is part of my midlife crisis, and this is gonna come as a real shock to my boss. I had just signed up to work on a cat picture project. <laughs> okay, and I told everyone I was gonna do it too. Senior VPs and blah, 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 right? I'm sure you can guess what it was related to. And uh, I am officially quitting that job on national TV and my boss is finding out about it at the same time that you are. So you might say that I've got a little bit of skin in this game. All right, that's right. So I'm gonna learn this stuff 
so that five years from now or three years from now, however long it takes, okay, when the systems are scalable enough to handle the human genome project, because they are, man, the thing practically fits in your pocket, right, and all of the other hard problems that we can solve with data mining, I will be ready. And I hope you guys are there with me. So have a great conference and thank you.